Right, okay, so let's have a look at the A star method. Okay. The first thing you'll notice is there's more information. Okay. On the graph, we've got the same distances. So it's that same little um, diagram we had before that was from the exam question. But we've got these other numbers. Okay. They are called heuristics. They are effectively, it's a fancy word for saying guess a heuristic. Okay. And the thing that A star uses, it still has the cost, how much does it cost to get to a node. But what it also has, and what this box represents, is the cost estimated to get to the end. Now that heuristic is designed, we have to create it, it's basically a little function, okay? And we design that depending on what application we're working on. So if this was like a map, finding yourself around a map, it might be, there are various heuristics you can use, a standard one is to use Euclidean distance, i.e. crow flies distance, and so like, oh, that is, so if we just look at these numbers and try and interpret them a little bit, we're saying H is roughly 80 things from E, N is 90 things from E, M is 20, so that's quite close, L is 50 things from E, and G is 70. And what A star is going to do, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to think about how far I've travelled, but I'm also going to think about which one should I choose based on how close I think it is to the end. Okay. In general, A star, I know you were playing with this yesterday and trying to get it to break and everything. A star will generally find the optimal route quicker than Dijkstra. Okay. Because it's using this, I want to go in the right this direction. It knows something about where it's trying to get to. Okay. Makes it a little bit more complicated though. Only a little bit. So we still have the same table. We've got all our nodes, but this time, the way that A star works, you only put the start node into your open set at the start. So you only write one thing down. The rest I've grayed out. Okay. As we visit neighbours. What we do is we say, oh, I've got some neighbours. Let's put them in the open set. But we also do the same thing that we did with Dijkstra. We say, okay, I've visited that one. Let's put it in the closed set. Don't pick it again. So it's the same system as Dijkstra. In fact, Dijkstra is a subset of A star. Okay. Right, so what we have to keep track of is the cost. How much did it cost to get to this node on the route that I've picked? We've got the heuristic cost, which is fixed. Okay, you can do dynamic ones, but we're not going to go down that territory. And then you've got this, the F cost. And the F cost is just these two numbers added together. It's a weighting factor, effectively. It's saying like, oh, fa favour the ones that are smaller on the H cost. That's all it's doing. It works in the same thing. We've got a loop. And we look around the loop and we say, give us the one that's the cheapest, that's available. But this time, we don't look at that, we look at this. Okay. And we do the exact same thing. If we visit a node again, as a neighbour that's already still open, then we'll update it if it was cheaper. Okay. So let's, let's run through this. So the first time through, there's only one thing in the open set. So we pick that one. Okay. So let's just run that. Okay, so we visit the two neighbours. So you see the same pattern that Dijkstra was using. So we work out the G one. We say, okay, how much did it cost us to get to G? So we look up what the cost at H was, which was zero. Notice H is in the closed set. And we say, right, oh, 25. So we put the G cost, as we call it in A star, at 25. To work out the F cost, you add those two numbers together. So the A star one's even worse when you're doing the adding up. You can really make a mess of it. So our full cost is 95. This is the number we look at to pick the smallest, not that one. Again, that is something that you could make a mistake in the exam. So be very careful whether they've asked you to do Dijkstra or A star. We calculate the same for N. So the cost, the G cost is 210, because that's how much it costs to get from H to N. But that had a heuristic of 90. So when we add that on, the F cost is 300. 
and again we put the parents in. Okay, so same process. So this time we're going to pick the longest F cost, which is the G because it's 95. And we update and set these numbers. So G's gone in the closed set, L and M have appeared in the open set. We've done the calculations, and you'll see the, this was really distressing me when I worked this one out the first time. As soon as that practice paper came out, I worked it out, and I was going, oh, God. I cocked it up three times. I couldn't get the answers because I kept cocking the numbers up. Right, so to get to L, we've got the cost to get to G plus the distance. So that's 76, exactly like it was on Dijkstra. Then we've got the heuristic cost of L is 50. So it's 50 away from the end. Add those together, get 126. Yeah? Now we do M. So that was 176 um, away from G. G cost 25 to get to it. Add those two together and you get 201. Horrible numbers. <laughs> Horrible numbers. It's got a further H cost of 20. So it's close. So we add that on, 221. Okay, so the next time around the loop, and we set the parents up, so we set the parents to G. Next time around the loop, we should pick L. And we did. And we pick L. Goes into the closed set because we've visited it. Look at its neighbours. E is a neighbour. The cost is what it costs to L plus the distance, which gives us 283. Now, notice the heuristic cost at E is zero. Why is that? Huh? It is the end. There is no cost to get to the end. Okay? Whether the exam board put that in or not, if they tell you where the end node is, always note to yourself that the H cost is zero. Okay? That's important. Otherwise, it'll break. Potentially. Okay? Right, so we calculate that. So we've got three things in the open set. The next time around the loop, we're looking at the F column. So it's going to be M, 221. Pick that up. It's got uh, a neighbour, but it's no cheaper to get there. It's got a neighbour, it's no cheaper to get there. Okay, go around the loop again. It's going to be forced to pick N. Okay. No neighbours, better in open set. Then we pick the E, and it's the exact same process. That is the end goal. Okay? So we go, all right, let's work our way back. So we go, okay, we start at E, parent L, go to L, parent G, uh, go to G, parent H. Who's the parent of H? Nobody, it's null, that's the start. Okay? Let's have a look at a different graph. So let's have a look at this one. Right, I have got a little graph here. It's called German Cities. I took it off, uh, there was a graph on the website with some German Cities, so I just copied it. I haven't got names, I've only got letters. So who knows what the letters were? I don't think I even bother trying to put it as the first letters. Right, so we've got a little graph here. And I haven't got the start nodes. I'm going to put it on dynamic. So it's the distances of the distances. Okay, I'm going to set that as my start node. And I'm going to set that as my end node. When I do my restart, what my system's done, it's done crow's distance in pixels from that to there, from that to there, from that to there. Okay? If I just move a few of these around, I might be able to see the numbers. I do really need to work on the rotational text rendering on my game engine, which is why these, it, it's not very good. Um, I need to look at it, it's complicated. Right, so I'm going to go through the process again. So the only thing in the open set is A, our start location. Everything else, we don't even know about them yet. We're going to process the neighbours as we go. This one's got three neighbours. So we'll investigate and we'll set up and we'll work out all the costs for the neighbours. 
Okay, so we've got B, C, and G. So we've got 752-618-886. C is going to get picked next. It would not be too far a stretch as a question to say, this is the state of the table, do it from there. So they'll expect you maybe, they could give you quite a big graph and partially sort it. Uh, partially, partially search it and say, carry it on and find out the route. Right, so we'll pick C next, which has got uh, three neighbours, but only two of them are in the open set. So A was already in the closed set, so we can't look at that one. So E and F, that's going to give us, ooh, F and E are very close, but F's going to get picked next. Right, so we get F, we've got the neighbour D and I, and I was where we were going. Okay, so we've done the calculations on those. So if we look at what we've got now, 752 for B, uh, E, 709, I, 707. So which one's going to get picked next? I. I. Which is the goal node? So that's it. We finished our search. Now, what we can see from this is we didn't even calculate anything for G and H. They never got a look in the A star algorithm got there straight away. Okay, so it didn't have to visit two nodes. There are actually one, two, three, four other nodes that are still in the open set. So it hasn't physically been to these nodes. Because it was using information from the F cost. Uh, from the F cost because of the heuristic cost. Right, I'm just going to save that graph because I've moved it. And just see what Dijkstra does. So let's call this. Oh, save me, do I'll call it. Right. Let's have a look at Dijkstra doing the same graph. Save me, do. Right. So you see that straight away that difference. Everything goes into the open set, but everything's got infinite distance apart from the start node. So let's just run through and see if it's. As efficient so it does the neighbors pick C now it's pick B because it's agnostic it doesn't know that this is the better direction to go in it goes let me let me take my time let me take my time I'm gonna be thorough I'm gonna be thorough I don't want no pressure of rushing to the goal it's doing like a tortoise rather than a hare okay so it's pick B then he's picked E, and it's going to keep picking the smallest one. So the smallest one this time is going to be J, which is over on the other side. Uh, oh, we've finally seen I. Uh, the smallest next one is F. Then it's G. Uh, what have we got next? D. So I'll go back. Then we've got H. Then we've got I. <laughs> so they both found the same route. But Dijkstra visited, physically went to every node in the graph. Okay? I can't think of any reason why you'd use Dijkstra over A star if speed is your priority. Slightly more complicated to code A star, but not much. The H costs, that's your confusion on the H, on the A star one. If you get the heuristic wrong, you can get suboptimal paths. Okay? But sometimes, and if you were doing a grid based system, okay, sometimes you might get a nicer, more pleasing route. If you were doing a game, for instance, you might not want to go straight there. You might want some like meandering on the way. Okay? So you could potentially mess about with the heuristic so that you get suboptimal routes, but they give you a more pleasing route. Okay, so these two algorithms will traverse graphs of, well, any size that you want to throw at them. Obviously, they start taking a lot of time. Okay, and there's a lot of optimization that you can do on the search. In this code that I've written, when it searches for the smallest one, it uses linear search. <laughs> All right, there is no ordering of the data. It has to look at every single item. So as the graph gets bigger and the open set gets bigger, the search gets slower. You know when we did um, smallest first, that really naff search method, the first one we did before we did the proper ones, that's what I was using effectively. So 
examine every number and see which one's the smallest and pick it. Okay, so that's tax graph. 